Uh, all right, everyone, let's get started. Uh, so, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. And the screen is also visible, right? Yes. Okay, good. So, we have been doing fluid mechanics and yeah, last time we saw this question and there was some correction that I wanted to do before we move ahead with the today's lecture. So, uh, probably those of you who had come in the last class would know that we had solved this uh, using the Bernoulli's principle. And here you have a tube which is inserted into a constant stream of liquid. And in the end we are supposed to calculate the flow rate through this pipe. And while solving this, uh, we had used the Bernoulli's equation. Uh, let's I'll just remind you guys of the three assumptions of Bernoulli's equation. So the steady flow, inviscid flow, fluid and the constant density flow. All these three assumptions are applicable in this case. So we can go ahead and apply our Bernoulli's principle. And while solving this, I had said that uh, when you apply the Bernoulli's equation between section 1 and section 2, uh, V2 is 0. So that is not true actually since the pipe has a constant diameter the right configuration will be not this so this is wrong the right configuration will be v1 equal to v2 because the flow rate has to be the same assuming that there are no frictional losses or or losses in the bend bend or turns in that case v1 has to be equal to v2 and uh, so basically the velocity with which the fluid enters the pipe is the same velocity with which it will exit the pipe at the top and uh, then uh, v1 and v2 gets cancelled out in this Bernoulli's equation and from there you can uh, get the expression for p1 and once you have the p1 you can apply the Bernoulli's between P0 and P1 and, and find the velocity V1 which we had found in the solution. And once you have V1 with you, then it's simply a matter of multiplying with the area of the cross section to get the volume flow rate. Yeah, so this was just a small correction that I wanted to do. And uh, after this, let's move on to the questions we'll solve today. So we'll start with this. I think I had given this as a homework. And uh, if anyone has solved it, please let me know how you have solved it and what you found as an answer. Yeah, anyone? So if you don't want to unmute yourself, you can just write your answer in the chat also. That also works for you. Okay, so I guess seems like uh, no one got the time to uh, try this out. It's okay. Uh, let's try to solve this here and I think last class I had given you a hint that you have to Chain radian function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So how did you solve it? Sir, uh, actually uh, for this uh, torque they are won't produce uh, as such external torque. Hmm. So total ang angular momentum change would be zero from the hinge point. Yeah, yeah. You're right. So yeah, I guess that's the hint I also gave in the last class. Yeah, so, yeah, and after that, uh, I use uh, VA equal to VB, uh, therefore, uh, Q by uh... no, you, you have to tell me what VA and VB are first. I uh, there is no A or B in this figure, right? So, uh, relative velocity of the point A and point B, huh? But what is point A and point B? Uh, I mean, area of the nozzle and Is it, sir? Uh, yeah, you. I, I think you are right. Yeah. So, 
as Abhijit correctly pointed out, here you have to take the torque at this point since that's the point which is hinged. Here the torque will be zero. And the only thing you need to be careful about is calculating the velocities at these two exit points of the sprinkler. So I'll read the question again first. Uh, here is the sprinkler which is rotating with some let's say angular velocity omega and that is that uh, velocity which we need to find and, and there is this flow inside this sprinkler which is divided equally into the right and the left halves and then it exits out from the top of these two exit point or, or exit nozzles as they call it which have equal uh, areas so the only thing which is different is or which makes it asymmetric is having different radial distances right so that's all the configuration we have and let's try to see how to solve this let's first try to sketch this out let's say this is our sprinkler and this is some point which is hinged let's call this point as okay maybe better to call it as o and we can call this point as a and this point as b so already in the question they have given that this b is 20 centimeters or we can just call it 2.0 meters here from O to A the distance is 10 centimeters or 0.1 meter. Now here we can see that there is this exit point here and here. So you will have some velocity exiting from here and here. And it's easy to see since the flow rate through both these exit point is same and the area of cross section of both these exit points are same so they will have same velocity at the exit point yeah also you have this rotation here so this rotation will induce some velocity based on the length of the lever here so here since it is rotating in this direction you will have an upward velocity which will be given by this omega which is the angular velocity plus the radial distance which is let's say 0.1 so this omega times 0.1 will be in the upper direction whereas in this half or at point b you will have again a tangential velocity coming from this radial arm times omega so this will be omega times 0 0.2 because the distance the radial distance here is 0 0.2 now all that is required to be done is just to take the moment of the torque at point a equal to 0 so we can say that the summation of the torque at point a is equal to 0 which just means that uh, this half and this half will have similar torques uh, but before going to that let's try to calculate the velocity v so that is pretty straightforward q is given to us q is 1 liter per second and it's always better to convert it into si unit so that will be 10 is to the power minus 3 meter q per second so here i have used a liter is 10 to the power minus 3 meter Now we have Q and we know that from this exit point Q by 2 is going out and the velocity is assumed to be V so using this continuity which is flow rate is equal to A times V we can simply calculate V to be Q over A but here our Q will be not just simply Q but Q by 2 because the exit flow rate is Q by 2. So that is 1 by 2 times 10 is to the power minus 3 times area which is yeah so the exit nozzle area is 1 centimeter 
Let's just write that here as well. So area is one centimeter square, which will be equal to 10 to the power minus four meter square. So that will be 10 to the power minus four, and then this becomes five meter per second. So this velocity will be same for both the points. Now the absolute velocity at point A, let's call this velocity as A, will be V times, oh sorry, V plus of this extra velocity which comes from the rotation, point 0.1 times omega. So that is 5 plus 0 0.1 omega. Whereas at V, uh, the absolute velocity at B will be this relative velocity minus 0.2 times omega. So then that becomes 5 minus 0.2 omega. Now these are the two velocities. Now we will use this in the torque formula. So torque will simply be given by the flow rate times the velocity times the distance from this hinge point. So let's say some radius R A or R B depending upon which side we are calculating for. And uh, since both of them have to be equal, so we can just simply say that Q by 2 times velocity at A times 0.1 is equal to Q by 2 times velocity at B times 0.2. So this Q by 2 is immaterial here as the flow rate is same through all both the points. And VA we just calculated is 5 plus 0 0.1 omega. And this 0.1 and 0 0.2 I can simply write as 2 times VB which is 5 minus of 0 0.2 omega. Now from this equation everything is known we just need to calculate omega here. So this is 5 plus 0 0.1 omega is equal to 10 minus, yeah that is 0 0.4 omega let's see, yeah then we can say that 0.5 omega is equal to 5 or omega is equal to 10 radians per second. Yeah, so that is the right answer to, the, uh, to this problem. So is this clear? Uh, it is going to rotate but uh, then also torque summation of torques is zero. Yeah, at this point, so this point is not rotating though. Sir? Uh, yeah. Sir, one thing I would like to ask about that sign conven convention rule because if we uh, assume that that A side would be the, um, I mean, the left side would be the negative and right side would be the positive, then what problem would we face? Huh, then the answer will be different, right? Because this will be minus and this will be plus probably. Yes, sir. Yeah, but uh, the direction of the rotation is given in the question seems. Uh, that's why. Actually, if we... Uh, yeah, if you do it reverse, then you might get a different answer, which probably will be wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So actually, um, generally, when we are, whenever we are having um, two velocities in the same direction, we take it as uh, negative, right? Yeah, the relative re, sorry, the relative velocity is negative. So that this is the relative velocity. So if you uh, take this in the in this direction, then you will have a difference here, and and for this it you will have summation, since they are in a different direction and they are in the same direction. So the absolute velocity is the sum of relative velocity and the the radial velocity which 
is given by the rotation. Sir, uh, which means uh, the V which we have found is the relative velocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. V is the relative velocity. Yeah. Uh, Yes, if sir. it was not rotating, then summation of torque uh, it was not equal to zero, na? If it was not rotating, but then, then summation of torque may not be zero. No, but if it is not rotating, how does torque come in? That's the point. No, means uh, I have doubt that summation of torque is equal to zero. Generally, what happen if it is not rotating? Then we take such equilibrium condition, na? Ah, okay. I think you are taking uh, talking about moments. No, no. So here at this hinge point, it is not rotating. That's why we take summation at this hinge point to be equal to uh, uh, zero. Yeah. Sir, can can you please explain how we got this Q into V into R? Uh, Q into V into R. Okay. Yeah. So this is just. So torque is given by some force across the radial distance, and force in this case you can just uh, think of it as the mass flow rate or the volume flow rate. So this is Q here. Q is okay. Q is the volume flow rate times some velocity because this anyway gives you the units of let's say meter cube per second. So this will be equivalent to force if if you multiply density here. This times the velocity will be equivalent to uh, the unit of force. So in in the in the case of uh, velocities, you take it like this. When when you have a flowing fluid, flow, let's say. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's try to uh, go on to the next question now. Hmm, yeah, so this is also from 2018. I think same set also. And here uh, we will apply the concept of Newton's law of viscosity. And let's see how to solve this. Let's first go through the question. A solid blo block of 2 kg mass slides steadily at the velocity at a velocity v along the vertical bar, as shown in the figure below. A thin oil film of thickness h equal to 0.15 mm provides lubrication between the block and the bar. The surface area of the face of the block in contact with the oil film is 0 0.04 meter square. So this surface area is given to us. The velocity distribution within the oil film cap is linear as shown in the figure. Take dynamic viscosity of oil to be sent to 10 to the minus 3 pascal second and acceleration due to gravity to be 10. Neglect weight of the oil, the terminal velocity of the block is. So uh, I guess a couple of things we need to know to solve this is. The terminal velocity so this is the highest velocity attained by an object falling through some fluid and and so when that happens the acceleration of the object is zero and basically this condition will help us in applying force balance where force the sum of all the forces is equal to zero because there is no acceleration and that's how we'll get the required velocity in this case and also you need to know the Newton's law of viscosity. So this you might have studied in your fluid mechanics courses. And simply it says that for a moving fluid, and so this fluid has to be Newtonian, the shear stress is directly proportional to the rate of shear strain. So this condition. And this proportion, uh, the constant of proportionality is given by something which is called as the coefficient of viscosity or we can just simply call it viscosity or dynamic viscosity 
एंड मेक दिस क्रॉस एंड this so the fluid which obeys this law are called newtonian fluids and which do not are the non newtonian fluids simply i think someone in the chat already yeah got the answer so yeah i think chandan is right yeah basically what we need to do is we can okay when we solve this we can simply try to do the force balance so here is our block you will have some weight of this block given by m times g whereas you will have some shear stress which will be applied at this surface of the block because of the viscosity of the fluid and this will be the full direction let's say and will be given by tau times area a so tau is like pressure or stress and stress times area gives you the force so if we have this just do the summation of all the forces is equal to zero since you need to calculate the terminal velocity and at that point when the object has reached the that state then there is no external acceleration acting on this object that would mean tau times a is equal to m times g now all that is needed is to calculate tau which we have just seen from our previous slide would be equal to mu times du by d by now also it is given that this profile is linear so since this is a linear profile you can just substitute mu times u over the sir 10.714323 yeah 10.7 yeah yeah so this is tau for us u okay instead of u i should write v so once you have this then you just need to do mu times v times h times the area which is the force given by uh, due to this shear stress in the upward direction is equal to m times g now mu for us is 7 into 10 to the power minus 3 velocity is what we need to find h is given as 0.15 and let's just do it in sa unit so this is 0.15 mm or 0.15 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters area is also given to us and this shear area is 0.04 meter square it's not right so much and this is equal to m that is 2 g they have asked us to take this 10 so you can solve this and i think most of you have already said it this is 10.7 meter per second yeah so that that is the right answer 10.7 so very simple problem so this this came for two marks i don't know why you just need to know the newton's law of viscosity and then at at, at terminal speed the acceleration will be equal to zero that's all any questions on this no sir okay good uh yeah this this is from k 2016 and assuming constant temperature condition and a to be an ideal gas the variation of atmospheric pressure with height calculated from fluke statistics is so so any guesses guys or does someone know the answer to this
sir would it be uh, quadratic linear someone said linear someone said so uh, why quadratic abhiji or is just a random guess uh, because yes sir okay क्वाड्रेटिकली Someone said hydrostatic, which is partly correct. So we will need hydrostatic condition to get the relation. Uh, okay, let's try to see how we can actually try to derive this. So uh, first thing is it's an ideal gas. So this uh, expression for ideal gas we all know. P V is equal to nrt or or mrt let's say and then also we know that p is equal to rho rt so i'm just different forms of ideal gas law also uh, we had seen in the last class uh, so as someone also pointed out hydrostatics and we know that this is the expression for hydrostatic Law. and uh, okay maybe if this is 1d we can just say that dp so instead of partials we can have exact differentials dp dc is equal to minus rho times g now rho we can substitute from here and we can say that this is p over rt so this goes here then this becomes dp dc is equal to Minus of P over R T times G. Now this this is sort of like a differential equation, and then this T P over P we can just write as minus G over R T times D G. Now here, uh, since constant temperature is assumed, it's very easy to integrate this or solve this differential equation. So you can just integrate from Let's say some pressure P naught to some pressure uh, like variable pressure P at some height d P over P. Since R is constant, G is constant, and T in the question is given to be constant, you can just write this is let's say some zero height till some height say D C. Okay, ideally I should have. Uh, Dummy variables, but you guys get the point, so it's fine. So then it is L n P over P naught. This is equal to G over R T times Z. And I think you might guess the answer now already. So P would be equal to some P naught times e raised to the power minus G over R T times Z. So Hey, from here you can see that this pressure varies or decays exponentially as you go up in the in the atmosphere. So you'll have some uh, okay uh, correct answer will be B, and then you'll have some exponential decay of of pressure going upwards in height from surface level till let's say troposphere or something. Yeah. So Abhijit, now you get why it's exponential. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, if anyone has any doubts on this one, just pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, they can ask, or I'll move on to the next one. Let's try to see the next one then. Let's 
So now we have this question. And this is from date 2021, uh, set to, and this is question number 48. And the question is a high velocity water jet of, of cross section area 0 0.01 meter square and velocity 35 meter per second enters a pipe filled with stagnant water. The diameter of the pipe is 0 0.32 meters. The high velocity water jets and drains additional water from the pipe and the total water leaves the pipe with velocity 6 meter per second as shown in the figure. The flow rate of entrainment, entrained water is in liter per seconds. So, sir, conservation of mass ka jo formula hai. Mass conservation. Right, right. So I think uh, both of you are correct. So you you need to apply the conservation of mass. And uh, so basically, what is happening is you have some pipe here which feeds in some. Uh, water from, uh, at some flow rate and there is this entrainment coming from somewhere maybe from the jet itself inside this big pipe and eventually everything leaves this big pipe with a uniform velocity of 6 meter per second so there is no accumulation of mass in between inside this pipe extra accumulation I would say so uh, basically what you need to do is inlet uh, inlet uh, flow rate is equal to outlet flow rate and since yes, the yeah, density does not change it should be the same so that that is what I have written here so this formula you need to use let me just go through all these terms so probably this is our big pipe and this is our small pipe so this will be the area of our small pipe AI and this is the velocity VI. This is A naught, and then this is the velocity V naught with which it is flowing out. And then you have some extra entrainments from somewhere given by this flow rate Q dot. So I think in the question, everything is given to you. I would ask you guys to solve this and uh, tell me the answer this problem so th this might involve some calculation I will give you five minutes and yeah let's please solve this I would like everyone to solve this and write their answers in the chat Yeah, can you repeat? I can't hear you. 0 0.132304 meter cube per second. Mm. Yeah, but uh, you need to read the question again. Oh, 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 pardon, pardon, pardon. I missed it. Later. Yeah, exactly. 132 letters. Yeah, I think this might be right. Uh, yeah. Others? Have anyone else solved this? One thirty two point five five. Yeah. One thirty two point three zero four. Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess most of you are correct. This it is indeed one thirty two point five five. For those who 
people are unable to solve this. Let's just see it here once again. So you have this big pile from which the fluid is flowing out with 6 meter per second outflow and this area is yeah, this area is given to you ok not the area but the diameter is given 0 0.32 and you have this small pipe from which 35 meter per second velocity flow is coming and then you have some flow so again uh, applying a continuity equation or mass conservation equation so you can call it mass conservation also because uh, the density is fixed so basically you are just saying that the mass coming in and mass going out is the same so this is ai vi plus q dot is equal to a naught v naught and AI is 0.01 meter square. VI is 35 meter per second. A naught is 5 by 4 times D square, which is 0.32 square. And V naught is given as 6 meter per second. Now we need to just find this so this is what we need to find and just using the formula so q dot will just be equal to a naught v naught minus a i v and yeah so this uh, won't do the calculation i'll just add this expression here so if you solve this i think what you will get is what people have already written down in the chat. So this will be 132.55 liters per second. Just you need to be careful here. So this is given in liters. Whatever you do, you will find the answer in meter cube per second. And then you have to multiply it with 10 to the power 3 in order to get it in liters per second. So just multiply this with 10 to the power 3 to get it in liters per second. Again, uh, please be careful always to see what they are asking the units in, in the end. Because this is again simple question, trivial, but it is of 2 marks. And you will lose out on some 2 marks if you just uh, write down the answer again in meter cube per second. So please, please be careful of that. That's all. Other than that, I don't think uh, there is anything further to explain in this. If anyone has any doubts, I can take this. <clears throat> okay, I don't think any further discussion is required on this one so let's move on to a different question now so this is from gate 2021 me set one and this is question number 22 yeah so uh, this is the question is consider fully developed steady state incompressible laminar flow of a viscous fluid between two large parallel plates the bottom plate is fixed and the top plate moves with a constant velocity of u. The separation between the plates is 5 mm. There is no pressure gradient in the direction of the flow. The density of the fluid is 800 kg per meter cube. And the kinematic viscosity is 1.25 to 10 is the power of minus 4 meter square per second. The average shear stress in the fluid is. So again, this this Newton's uh, law of viscosity. Yeah, of exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely right. So you need to know the Newton's law of viscosity for uh, uh, Newtonian fluid as well. 
only the intermittent fluids follow that and i think chantan has written down the answer already that's correct it should be 80 and uh, i guess uh, other than that you need to know just what kinematic viscosity is so that you might have studied in your uh, fluid mechanics course so this is denoted by mu and this is just given by the regular mu times rho so uh, if if in the question instead of having a dynamic viscosity or just the regular viscosity they have given you the kinematic viscosity you can uh, just reformulate it by simply doing rho times mu times partially partially so that is the expression when you have kinematic viscosity instead of the dynamic viscosity. Yep, uh, yeah, so let's look at the solution now. So you have two plates. the bottom plate is fixed and the top plate is moving and this is moving with a constant velocity u this is given by 4 meter per second the distance between these two plates is 0.5 m oh 0.5 m this is Actually, five m. So, they are asking us to calculate the average shear stress. Now, the formula for shear stress we just saw was mu times rho times partial mu partial i. And here you can apply the nose slip and say that u will be zero here because this plate is fixed, and u is four meters here. So, we can assume a linear profile. So we can assume a linear profile in this. I have this again as mu times rho times u over the thickness between the two plates, which let's say is h. So then tau becomes mu is given as 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 4. Rho is 8 into 10 is the power 2. This is rho. U is 4 and h is 5. We can convert it into meters so that will tends to our minus 3. And I guess if you solve this, you will end up getting 80 pascals. So is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Now, shear shear stress distribution between the two plates. The profile of shear stress distribution. Yeah. So uh, okay, this is a good question actually. So the shear stress profile between two plates does matter. Not the shear stress profile. I guess you mean the velocity profile. And uh, oh, yes. yeah, yes. yeah. So here, I think nothing more is given. So probably it's best to assume that it is a linear profile. And uh, we know that the velocity at the top will be equal to uh, 5 meters per second because uh, so here again, you can apply the no slip condition. And since this plate is moving with the velocity of 4 meter per second, the fluid, the fluid has to move with the velocity of 4 meter per second as well. And since uh, no other information is given it's best to assume uh, that the profile between these two points will be linear and if, if it was not linear then uh, probably it will so here you will have a variable term right so you can have let's say u squared then then you you'll have 
not just constant shear everywhere. So, uh, okay. in, yeah, in my opinion, just the lack of uh, information in the question can uh, lead you to assume a linear profile. Yeah. So any other questions? Yes, for I guess this was a short session today. I, I guess I had only put these many questions for today. Uh, since we still have some time, I can take any doubts that you guys have before we stop. Uh, okay, in, uh, that's it, 10 minutes or so. Uh, in previous one of the previous questions, yeah, you have uh, we have taken a partial differentiation into exact differentiation. Mm, yeah. What was that condition? Uh, okay, yeah, I think this was in uh, the hydrostatic question, right? So uh, actually, yes, sir. yes, sir. yeah, when you have like a three D flow, then uh, the pressure will vary in x, y, and z, right? And then uh, that's why. When you write down the hydrostatic pressure, you write it down in uh, the partial form. Partial P partial Z is equal to minus rho times G. But since in that case, I can simply assume uh, the pressure to be just varying in Z direction. And okay, we can call this uh, as a 1D flow. Then basically pressure is just a function of Z and not a function of X and Y. And then I can uh, replace the partial differential with an exact differential. So partial P partial Z becomes T P D C that's all. Okay sir. Yeah. For you guys I guess for the most cases you can just write it as D P D Z and not uh, worry about partial P partial Z because anyway uh, I don't think uh, the pressure gradient forces are uh, mean being used in any topics that we will do. So you can just write it as TPD is equal to minus rho g. Yeah. So any other doubts, guys? Any of this? So how are your preparations going? If someone wants to talk about that. Now it's bit like scattered due to college semester examination. When will the exams get over? On 19th December. Oh, so you have roughly 10 more days of exams. Mm -hmm. And everyone has exams or if someone's exams have finished, they are maybe are focusing more on the preparation. Up to December 19. Oh, see. Like December 19. See. So, Chris, your exam is finished, is it? You are raising your hand. I don't know if you have a mic. So, I'm completed the degree. Oh, yeah. Prepare for only gate. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's good. So, you, you are focusing on gate. Nice. So, have you I am uh, a... uh, applied for some test series? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good. Made easy. Good, good, good. What about you, Suraj? I am also preparing only for it. Yeah. And have you have you uh, applied for some test series? Giving some yes, sir. Uh, I have joined ex-surgic test series, but uh, hmm. I am getting very uh, low score in... Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, so Ace, right? Ace, you are saying. Uh, ex-surgic. Oh, I don't know about that one. So, uh, are the questions very difficult or you are making silly mistakes? So, what do you think is the problem? So, for questions, it requires depth knowledge and I am lagging in that. Oh. 
so if you think uh, there are some questions that uh, you think will be useful for the class also you can just take screenshots and uh, mail it to me we can actually do those questions in the in the sessions as well because uh, it's always good to do more questions i would say if the pattern is very different from what we see in the previous year questions there are high chances that such questions will not appear in the exam right but okay it's still good to have a better preparation so uh, yeah if if you think there will there are some questions which are tricky or which uh, will be beneficial to all the students you can just uh, send me those questions and we can discuss those in the class as well but uh, yeah. don't be discouraged if you are getting low score in the uh, in the test series is this is this is just for your practice and the main focus for you should be that you have uh, you are managing your time well in the test series one and uh, you are not committing silly mistakes so the questions that you know how to solve you are actually getting them correct that is the main goal because there will be always right. yeah few questions in the gate exam let's say uh, 10% question so uh, remove 90% marks uh basically 10 or 15 marks of question that will be tricky and that requires you to have a very in depth knowledge of all the concepts you can still leave those and get okay 80 85 marks still so so the important focus should be on getting first those 85 marks and then you can focus on the uh, rest of the 15 marks as well Okay, sir. And uh, what happens when I see uh, previous year questions? Then uh, it seems that I can. And when I see that uh, text series questions, then it seems uh, very difficult. Ah, uh, so maybe that they have purposely made the test series very difficult. Then I guess because uh, I'll tell you that if you focus on last ten years of exam, I think you had asked me this question in the last session also. If uh, yes, sir. Yeah, if just solving last previous year question is uh, enough. Hey, of course it won't be enough but it would be sufficient for you to get a good score i feel so don't be discouraged by difficult questions in the test series and if possible you can also appear in some different test series maybe they have questions which are of the level of uh, the exam or which have similar patterns as the exam then uh, you can actually uh, boost up your confidence as well because you have already said that the previous year questions you can do easily so Okay, sir, and uh, that's why now I am preparing now most on previous year. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first, first priority should always be previous years. As I had told you last time, previous year questions multiple times. If you solve those, then uh, you are in a good shape to get a good score. I feel. But yeah. Uh, but you should not do these questions just in a leisure time. You should always have like a timer with you and see how much time you are taking to solve these questions. and how many questions you are committing silly mistakes in so the test series again i'll repeat the test series are important because they give you the environment of the exam you sit in front of a computer you tick this you tick this. Uh, oh yeah i think chandan yeah chandan sir sure you can leave uh, so we are not solving any more question yeah go ahead please so i was saying that uh, you just get the feeling of the exam and then with that you get so you the chances of you making silly mistakes decreases that's why these test series are important excuse me sir yeah sure so can you kindly tell us how can we tackle this aptitude questions sometimes it is tricky ah uh, okay yeah. so if you can help us with some questions or concepts like very important it will be helpful mm, yeah okay aptitude uh, so aptitude is sort of like a tricky thing actually uh i'll tell you when i was giving this exam uh, i focused least on the aptitude part because uh, somehow those questions seemed very easy to me but they i have seen in few uh, exams very tricky question they will ask you from aptitude and those okay that takes lot of time so uh, at least in my opinion the aptitude exams are like hit or miss if they are easy it will not take you much time if they are hard then it, really requires you to think outside of the box in a way and then solve that 
but if you think there are some aptitude question which again will be beneficial for the class you can just let me know so i have not uh, really looked into the aptitude uh, sections in the previous year I'll, I'll try to check if i find some tricky or some interesting question i'll try uh, try to get those as well but most so certain formulas which can help us formulas oh i see yeah let me okay let me go through some of those uh, questions in the previous year papers and see if there are some uh, repetitive patterns where we can just have uh, these formulas and then we can just quickly do those sure thank yeah. you sir. yeah but uh, while so one trick for, to improving your aptitude uh, portion is so aptitude comes in i guess any kind of exam right you can have some practice it whenever you practice your gate preparation let's say you are uh, practicing the fluid mechanics topic make sure you give last 15 minutes to solve two aptitude questions from not just from gate you can get those questions from anywhere i think even if you type online uh, aptitude questions you will see bunch of it because i i guess even if some of you are preparing for placements you will need to uh, solve lot of aptitude questions because i think in one of the uh, primary rounds they they ask you to give this aptitude exam and then uh, later on you will go for these company interviews so uh, those sort of things uh, give like 15 20 minutes just solving aptitude every day it's just a matter of practice actually so you will have these uh, questions where you have like flow coming out of a tap and how much time it takes to fill the uh, beaker it's those sort of questions so uh, x is related to y y is related to z and and those 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 sort of things so it re just requires practice again and uh, there is no like a uh, hard and fast rule uh, of uh, remembering any formula to solve those i would say uh, keep practicing one or two aptitude question every day and you will eventually get better at it if you're struggling with aptitude yes yeah sir can i can I, can i have your mail id so that i can uh, ask uh, sure. the question uh, i'll again i'll write on the mail id in the chat box Some fluid mechanics, yeah. Any test books? Ah, uh, test books. So, uh, yeah. I think I don't know. Uh, in your course, which uh, which textbooks you followed, but uh, the standard textbook for fluid mechanics is Fra Frank M. White, and uh, there is one by Sengel. I think it's called Elementary or Fundamentals of Fluid Mechanics by Sengel. Uh, the same so author play, you will play. have uh, thermo uh, the. Uh, thermodynamics book also from those two are so very good mention in chat box sir, so that we can assess okay, okay. yeah sir actually we followed the rk bansal uh yeah i think uh, rk bansal is also good uh yeah i remember following that one in my btech also yeah that rk bansal uh, book is also good so but the thing is i don't know how much time you get to uh, go through these books and uh, study each concept but it is always good to refer to books when you are uh, stuck somewhere so i would say you can follow this frank and white or as r kevin sil someone had pointed out you can also follow that sir how we solve question in less time ha so that okay vikas uh, that's a good question actually but that will only come if you practice the there is no shortcut to that the more you practice the quicker you will get at solving the questions so i would sir, say i take uh, 10 uh, question uh, i take one hour uh, on solving 10 question ha uh, so okay if you are taking 10 uh, 10 a uh, one hour to sell, solve 10 questions so you already know that you are slow right so you have yes. to uh, like keep a timer with you and try to uh, let's say today uh, when you sit and practice try to solve 14 15 question in uh, in an hour or so so if you keep practicing i am pretty sure you will you will reach to that level so ideally in an hour you should solve 30 questions and uh, then in in gate exam you will be managing your time pretty well so just practice it's it's okay if you are slow right now you can get fast there is no need to worry about it. Sir, uh, if I, 
in question uh, i avoid uh, uh, some pictures uh, or uh, some calculation type uh, which uh, fast no 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 uh, don't do that uh, so that will increase your chances of making uh, errors actually so always take as much time as you can to properly read the question and don't avoid any calculations but i would say that when you do calculation do all the calculation at the end so let's say you have g somewhere you have pi somewhere so don't try to solve this g and pi at the start uh, when you calculating velocity and then you have to find the flow rate put everything into the final formula and then only substitute this g pi all those constants so that uh, you have to do the final calculation only once so that is i guess one trick you can use to uh, increase the speed but uh, i would just again say that practice practice is what you need if you are uh, a bit slow in solving questions right now sir and uh, it is necessary that we uh, read question and uh, write every uh, numeric data which given in the uh, question it's not necessary but i recommend it because uh, then again you will decrease your chances of having errors so it does not take much time to write uh, the given data in the in the question right so it hardly takes you like 10 seconds or so so i would recommend you to you guys to write it and then uh, at least you don't have to look at the question again you can just write uh, look at your uh, rough worksheet where you have written all those uh, given data from the question and quickly solve it okay yeah sir so one more book uh yeah i, I will have to look it up so it's called single i think i'll uh, maybe in the next class i'll put it in the slides also don't worry. thank you sir yeah. sir mm, yeah vijit uh i would like to write in middle for some of my personal problems regarding uh, preparation and ಸರ್ವಸ್ can you repeat sir uh, today is there any classes from 6 o'clock i am not sure if uh, there are regular sessions then it will be there but if there are no regular sessions it won't be there uh, you can uh, check that uh, i think someone knows can someone uh, confirm what uh, she knows yes, from 6 to 7 gas turbines class is there okay okay on gas turbines where there is a class sir 6 to 7 or 7 to 8 6 to 7 from gas turbine 7 to 8 has 